Good morning, everybody. Welcome to our 100 useless subjects in neurosurgery. But let's start first with a better understanding of what occurs in the spasms of the arteries. And to understand that, we need to look at the physiologic conditions that regulate the contraction of the vascular smooth muscle in the arteries of the brain. In that way, we can see which are the mechanisms that are altered with subarachnoid hemorrhage and how both nimodipine and clazocentin had been uh, thought to be relevant to prevent this syndrome to occur. So let's talk first about the physiologic smooth muscle contraction. And as you will know, for this contraction to occur, the myosin light change need to interact with actin filaments. This interaction produces the fibers of actin to go inside of the fibers of myosin and the muscle to contract. And the myosin light change interact with actin thanks to the phosphorylation that they suffer, which is due to the activation of the myosin light change kinase. This process is due to the activation of the calmodulin, a process that is mainly controlled by the increased intracellular concentration of calcium. This increased intracellular concentration of calcium occurs in physiologic conditions by depolarization of the smooth muscle membrane with opening of calcium channels and depolarization that extends to into the sarcoplasmatic reticulum which also release calcium. Now, these calcium channels open by the interaction of the protein G coupled receptors, which also in physiological conditions have the control of an endothelial contraction factor that is the endothelin one produced by the endothelial cells. And the endothelial cells play a very important role in maintaining the tone of the smooth muscle cells, both by releasing the endothelial contraction factor, but also by producing some of the endothelial releasing factors. Now, once the contraction of the cells occur, the myosin light change get to be dysphosphorylated, and this is due to the myosin light change phosphatase. In addition, the myosin light change kinase is inactivated due to an increase in the activity of the protein kinase A, which acts by increased levels of cyclic AMP. Now, as I mentioned before, the endothelial cells play an important role in maintaining the tone of the smooth muscle cells. And the other side of the coin is the production of the endothelial releasing factor that is the endothelial nitric oxide synthase. This enzyme is going to produce nitric oxide, which is important for the activation of the guanylate cyclase, which increase the intracellular levels of cyclic GMP, which are going to produce sarcoplasmatic reticulum reuptake and reduction in the intracellular concentration of calcium. So in physiologic conditions, the smooth muscle can contract in the vessels but then gets to be released by the mechanisms that are shown in the screen on red. Now, during subarachnoid hemorrhage, the vascular smooth muscle contraction occurs in pathological conditions in two periods, an acute period and a delayed period. The initial phase of vasospasm after subarachnoid hemorrhage is calcium dependent and is due mainly to the abnormal depolarization and opening of the voltage gated channels that induce an increase in the intracellular concentrations of calcium. However, this phenomenon doesn't last too long. And after the acute period, what really goes on in the generation of the syndrome of vasospasm and the delay neurological deficit is due to the sensitization of the contracting mechanism to calcium. And this occurs by several mechanisms. The protein G coupled receptors get to be activated by the endothelin one, which is produced 
in excess in patients with subarachnoid hemorrhage, as has been demonstrated in multiple uh, studies, both in CSF and in uh, serum of individuals with uh, subarachnoid hemorrhage. And the protein G coupled receptors are not going to only open the calcium channel uh, channels, but are going to also activate the protein kinase C. And by activation of the protein kinase C, several activated protein kinase are going to occur, including the activation of the raw kinase, which inhibits the myosin light change phosphatase, removing the possibility of the phosphorylation and increasing the permanence or persistence of contraction in the smooth muscle cell. In addition, the protein kinase C is going to activate the mitogen activated protein kinase and by way of this activation and by direct effect is going to induce phosphorylation of caldesmine and caldesmone, both of which prolong the phosphorylation of the myosin light change, inducing persistent smooth muscle contraction. First, arterial narrowing is not the only cause of the late clinical deterioration. Second thing is arterial narrowing is not necessarily multifactorial. In fact, the blockage of endothelin 1 was quite significant in inducing release of the angiographic vasospasm. Now, that increase in the endothelin 1 activity may actually be an effect of a single factor, as we will discuss in the following slides. But the entire picture of the late clinical deterioration most likely is multifactorial and the contraction of the arteries is only one of those multiple factors.